Yeah, so it was Jesus. Okay, okay. I just wonder, get your thoughts on what do you think of the sign? And I think that's not very Christian love of y'all. No, what, what do you mean? I don't your, see it. What's your, uh, what's your proof of that? Because we do love you. What, 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 uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, You keep coming by. You must really like the sign, huh? Don't like it? I just keep thinking about the first two letters being the same colors as the last word. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I didn't think about that. Yeah. You're talking about like our lies and then be saved? Yeah, because it's mostly bad news, right? And then there's good news. Trust Jesus, be saved. And the other side has all good news, right? You know where you're going to go when you die? Where, where is it where's it going to be? The hell, you think? No, I think it's the same place. The same place. I don't know what that okay. is. Oh, Sane, like S-A-N-E? S-A-N-E. Sane. Yeah, like, you know, wherever we came from, like where we go. Oh, okay, so you don't believe in, like, a heaven and hell? No, nothing like that. Oh, okay, so, like, where would Hitler be right now? You know, you know who Hitler was? Yeah, I'm familiar with Hitler. Okay. Do you think there's any punishment? still exists. I think... I think in all likelihood, Hitler was born, lived, died, returned to Earth, and then either he's going to be reborn in some other form millions of years later as the entire universe rebirths. Uh, so you don't think or, there's any punishment for Hitler then? Killed six million Jews and five million others, no. including homosexuals. No, I, I don't think that the world works in a way that's like cyclical like that. So you don't think that there should be punishment for crimes? Should be, yeah, but yeah. is I don't think so. so who, like if you look at the way that America works, which is uh, like a pretty nice society as far as they go around the world, the people that should be getting punished usually don't. I mean, as far as like basic and easy to identify crimes, they definitely do. Yeah. But when things get really complex, they usually aren't manageable. So and you're um, talking about a crime so great that no punishment could possibly, you know, accumulate to the point where it would manifest in a way that is ultimately equivalent in the opposite direction. Uh, so you think that, that cr the, the crime, uh, the punishment should fit the crime then? Like if you park in the wrong so. spot downtown or you murder somebody, the person who parked in the wrong spot, parking violation, should get less of a punishment than the murderer? Do you think that's uh, a reasonable no. thing? No, because, I mean, if I had to choose a way for the universe to exist, I would like there to be a God. But I think part of that is because I, as a human being, and especially at my age, I'm still looking for somebody to, like, teach me and help uh -huh. help me understand the universe. So having somebody that could ultimately guide me would be fantastic. Uh -huh. But I'm just not observing that. Yeah. Are you, are, how do you, what's your sense of morality like? Like, would you consider yourself to be, like, a good and moral person? I would say I'm, like, a chaotic good kind of person. Chaotic good. I know chaotic. that's unique. I haven't heard that. So, I, I, like, here's an example. How many lies have you told in your life, do you think? In uncountable. Okay, uncountable. so what would you be called then if you told lies? Well, I think lies, just like the concept of morality in general, is a subjective thing. Because you can lie for good reasons. Uh, you can also lie for the fun of it, and it can have no moral implication at all. Uh, yeah. A lot of the lies that I've been told, that I have told, have been really, really destructive. Uh, and a lot of the good lies that have been told me told to me have protected me from things but also caused me you know long-term uh, grief so i think that it's one of those things that's just too complicated to really pin down but you have lied before yeah, yeah have you ever stolen anything before do you think yeah i think most of the time i steal without realizing it. yeah like if you download uh things and not pay for or if you buy from a pirated site like microsoft office for 19.99 oh boy you just pirated you know like you ever done that before yeah 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 definitely. so then what would you be called Starts with a T. I don't know. A, a lying thief, actually, because you've lied. And, you and have you ever used God name, God's name in vain, do you think? What's God's name? God damn it. Like she, she oh, just, God. it's called blasphemy. She just did that. Have you yeah. ever done that yeah, before? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so you're a blaspheming, uh, lying thief, right? Yeah, that's Have you ever right. looked at anybody with lust before? Yeah. But see, All I the think time. there's a difference between, between having an action and being that action. There's a difference being between... Being that action. So explain yeah. being that action. Well, being that action is like, say for instance, you were in the military uh -huh. and to protect yourself, you ended up killing somebody. To somebody else, you're a murderer. 
but to other people you're a hero. And you can't identify yourself simply as the implications mm. of that individual crime or act. Well, like in the, in the army, there's a standard. You're given orders, go take out that village, kill, kill everyone in the village. That's yeah. army orders. You do that, you actually are insubordinate if you don't. Now, if you, you go to that village, you do your thing, kill everybody, and then on the way back, you go through another village, you go, hey, that was fun. Start mowing down kids. Now, you, now you're a murderer. You've gone beyond uh, yeah. what the that army told you. I mean, if you yeah, think so there's about a standard, Nazi, yeah. If you think about standard, Nazi that's Germany, good. I mean, they were still mm. given those Oh, yeah. Murders. Yeah, that's a good example because um, murdering Jews was legal in Nazi Germany. Just like slavery was legal in the 1800s, right? Yeah. You could own, torture, rape, and, and kill another human being right. that's black in, this, in the case of America. Right. You know, that was legal, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. okay. because morality, okay. right, right, There's exactly. Yeah, because the standard, God's standard, is higher than the, than the law. Well, I think God's standard is different because God's asked people to kill too, and God's put people in situations where they couldn't. Well, avoid that's it. a good point because He killed everybody on the earth except for eight people in the Noah yeah. flood because of wickedness. And actually, it talks about similar things as what's going on here. There was wickedness throughout the whole land. So, in a way, He kind of aborted Earth. I mean, you think about well, it. abortion is murder. God can't murder. Why not? Because God is the standard. He can kill, and he does often. Like, like he killed, that, right? like, are you familiar with the a book of Acts in the, in the New Testament? No. It's, it's, a, it's the action of the apostles, the acts of the apostles. So in chapter 5, two people lied, and he, a husband and a wife, uh, about some property, and God killed them one after another. Yeah. Like, that's pretty serious. You. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if God kills people, yeah. right, like, he killed everybody on earth. And if I have an abortion, I'm a killer and he's not. Why is that? You're a, and actually, not just a killer, you're a murderer. Okay, yeah, I'm a murderer. Yeah, yeah. Why is he not a murderer? Because he's, he's the standard. He cannot, he cannot do wrong. So he's untouchable. He's a standard. But see, that's exactly... Untouchable might be a good word. Yeah, I've never heard that. But, but he's a, he's well, above. I'm, I'm Your standards just... are much lower. You would say, oh, yeah, it's okay to murder a baby. And God say, no, no, that is that is murder. And, no. and you will go to hell for that. No, but that description, God's like, <laughs> but let's not stop there. What if we murder all of the babies and their parents? Well, again, and God can't murder. God can only kill. Murder is no. Well, let's go back to definition. Now, murder is the <laughs> illegal taking of a human life. Like if I had chicken dinner Abortion last night, so, I didn't murder. I killed the chicken indirectly. Legal. Wait, so that's and actually that's well, the, slavery was legal. That's Holocaust murdering Jews was legal. So that's you so even different. said it just because it's legal doesn't make it right. right. Correct. Yeah, you even yeah. said that. I Fair enough, that. okay? Good. That was a good point. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, think? no, that's like the perfect <laughs> argument. So, like, if morality exists at the level that the being is here? held to by the observer, then morality can exist in isolation of the rest of the system. So, if I killed somebody, it would be immoral to those that are observing me, and immoral to God well. as an observer as well. But if, like, let's say, um, if uh, Putin, for instance, were to murder, you know, let's just say all of Czechoslovakia. Uh -huh, yeah. um, he's above that. I mean, the people of his country are not only going, well, I mean, I say the people of his country, but it gets more complicated than that because people yeah, yeah. are individuals. But let's say yeah. half of the country, which is still probably far shooting, are in support of that. They think that it's not immoral. They think that that's just. If, yeah, they're following Putin, them. right? Yeah, they're right. they're serving Putin, just like the so, people that serve Hitler. Oh, what a cute! I'm seeing more of the French. That's a French bulldog, right? Those are yeah, so, cute. so cute. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I get you because yeah, if you're following Putin or you're following Hitler or Pol Pot or even Charles Manson, you know who yeah. Charles Manson was? Yeah. If you're following him, you're thinking, yeah, Charlie, it's right. Let's go slice him up and yeah, that's right. You know, kill the pigs or whatever it is, whatever they said. Uh, or, or yes, let's go uh, murder some. Jews, that's what the Hitler, Hitler Nazis did, right? right? They're following Hitler. That's another standard. God's standard is way above there. He says, you shall not murder. You shall not murder. So, um, so God only does just killing of human beings. So like, like if, 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 if uh, somebody came up and tried to stab me and that policeman pulled out his gun and went boom and killed that person, would that be murder? That depends on the legal, the, the law of this specific Straight up. Location. Go ask them. It would, wouldn't be murder. Um, it could be. And no, no, because if that, if there was a threat on my life and he, and yeah, that guy person, they, they didn't even have to stab me. They just, I agree if they're they rearing back with the knife and he goes boom and blows their brains yeah. out. 
done. It's like case yeah. over. I mean, know? first off, I feel like that guy, depending on you know the circumstances, should probably be considered a hero for having saved your life in that instance. But because of the way that the system works, in some cases, he won't be marked a hero. He'll be beaten down by the people that have observed well, the situation, or more likely yeah. hadn't observed the situation, or making right, right, false yeah. understandings yeah. of it. And he could potentially get yeah. the negative influence of a law. Exactly. That's why we have. That's why we have courts. We work everything out right. legally. We go through it as best as we can. Yeah. You know, and yeah, yeah, there are flaws in the in the system, and uh, and you know, and that guy shouldn't be. He shouldn't be held as a hero because he's just doing his job. Like if I if somebody was drowning in the river and I, and I went and saved him, I shouldn't be a hero. I'm just doing what I'm doing the minimum. I'm loving my neighbor. Oh, I, I hate mean, that. you I know, hate that idea, man. you know. So if I if I now if I sat there and watched, oh, you know, that's too bad. I don't want to get wet and muddy. I, I can swim, but eh, it's cold. It, yeah. It's kind of cold today. I don't want to. Blub blub. They're gone. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. They're dead. So I just in effect just committed murder. I hated my neighbor. Yeah. I hated God. So you see, you see what I mean. Yeah. So yeah, we need to do more than just uh, yeah. the basics. Yeah. And that and that policeman well. shot that guy, killed him, didn't murder him, killed him, prevented me from getting stabbed. I would be so grateful. I'd be like, oh, thank you, yeah. so much. But he would just say, F, just, just that's all in the day's work. Well, say. that sounds like just being humble. I mean, you're still observing him as a hero. That, in a way, yeah, I would be grateful because I didn't yeah. get stabbed, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 But agree. legally, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. But it's yeah. not like a medal of honor or anything like that. But, right, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, if he loses his job because of this righteous act that he that he committed, then then in the eyes of the law, he's seen as guilty. Then he's committed a sin and he's a murderer. And therefore, in God's eyes, he would be damnable. Uh, say that again. I kind of lost. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, so if the if the concept of morality exists because of both God and the system that God has created, instead uh -huh. of just God, uh -huh. then as the system changes, which you said it has changed, you know, we no longer allowed to have slaves, then the moral implications of actions have changed uh -huh. as well. No, no, it's, no, let me, no, I just want to interrupt, sorry, but just want to interrupt. So we're talking about God's standard and man's standard. So slavery is always wrong, at least chattel type slavery. Now, now, indentured slavery, like say, uh, if I buy a car from you uh, on payments and I go wreck it and I go, I, I can't, I can't afford to uh, finish the payments, but I'll work for you for five years. That's indentured slavery. So that, that is, well, that is what the Bible talks about. Now, chattel slavery, like where they go, man stealing is what they go over to Africa, buy, grab some slaves, kidnap them, and then sell them. And that's different. Yeah. That's illegal. They're it's both, always been illegal. They're both kind of like effed up, though. I mean. Just because uh, indentured slavery makes sense in kind of an isolated scenario, there are so many um, external factors that can change the situation to make it moral. For instance, if the person that sold you the car had rigged it, you know, had left some of the suspension components loose and changed it. situation that allows for indentured slave slavery to part to mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, occur. I it's suppose. just like employment nowadays only only this is si like signing a contract. Yeah. Well in a sense, you know, because some some jobs have contract union contracts. Uh, you can get in serious trouble if you quit a job if you have a union yeah. contract. So that's like indentured slavery. And when you sign up and say yes I will work for ten years for, for the plumbers union or the welders union or whatever. That's that's like indentured slavery a little bit. Yeah, I like yeah. I like it when you yeah. when you uh, kind of broaden the concept of it like that yeah. because I think it makes the, the argument more agreeable on both sides. Yeah. Well, so it's all about definitions. Yeah. So we have to agree. Uh, you know, like like here's an example. Like when I say Jesus, that word Jesus, and a Mormon. A uh, person says Jesus. Yes. Those are two different, totally right. different. They aren't. Yeah. This Jesus is of LDS. That's the LDS Jesus. Yeah. This is the Christian Jesus. They are not the same person because they don't have the same facts of them. Right. One's the LDS Jesus is the brother of Lucifer. They believe he was created. He's one of many gods. Had uh, wives. Had you know engaged yeah, in polygamy. We can talk about 
different. It's a different Jesus. Day. Yeah, that's it. And not to get off on on a, a tangent, but anyway, that's an idea. Of, that we gotta have define our words. So, yeah, I agree. You know. Do you, uh, I mean, are you having fun out here? I get a rainbow. I feel like it's there. important to keep oh, conversations. Money. There you go. Don't spend it all in one place, okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, like I think that that's a beautiful thing. But like, in that instance specifically, we can still agree that like, following. You can all agree that was nasty. Yeah, loud. I wouldn't use that word, but it was loud. I'll yeah, say that. He was, he was inconsiderate. And rude, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, for instance, if a person is born, and I think this argument's made, been made a million times, but somebody's born in Southeast Africa, you know, 200 years ago or whatever, they never get to see Jesus. They never get to hear anything about Jesus. And they're put in a situation where, you know, let's say it's like a church uh, service situation, where they just can't avoid it. Uh -huh. They wind up being sinners, they go to hell because of that. Yeah, that yeah. is inconceivable in my eyes. Like, no just You don't God think it's fair, right? Ever. I just think no oh, okay. just God or no omniscient uh, or omnipotent God would ever create that oh, situation. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good question. And that's actually a pretty common one. Yeah. And it's kind of a little complicated, but if I can maybe make it, simplify it, and at least I have to simplify things in my mind. So, so do you know of anyone who's ever kept the Ten Commandments? Do you personally know? Like on, like on their personal? No, actually obeyed them. Like, uh, have never told a lie, never stolen, oh, God, no. never blasphemed. No. Ne no. Okay, okay. So it's likely that no one in the world has ever kept the Ten Commandments, right? right? Except for one. There's one, I'm thinking of one person that's kept the Ten Commandments. You know who it is? Jesus Christ, right? And not get off on a tangent on that, but there's the Ten Commandments. So um, so he kept not only the Ten Commandments, but all the uh, the Jewish laws as well. Perfectly, he perfectly obeyed the Father. So so the reason, I want to clarify, the reason that God sends people to hell, it's because their sin against God. It's not because they don't they don't know about God, they don't know about Jesus, it's because they don't want to. Because of, the Bible says, light came to the world, but men love their darkness. And if you heard me preaching, I was sharing this, how people love sin. And I, and I did, as a Christian, as a non-Christian, I loved my sin. That's why I wouldn't come to Christ. But I didn't want to give up that thing. I, it's like, you heard the story of the, how, they, how they kill monkeys? Like some natives kill monkeys, they put something in a jar, and the and the monkey will reach in and grab that that thing. And he's so fascinated with these. I want that, yeah. but he won't let go. And now he's stuck. And they come and they bump, and then they have you know monkey monkey stew or whatever. You know, um, so it's it's not let going that of that precious thing that you love. And in the same way, somebody that's like a, a, a tribe that's isolated in Papua New Guinea or whatever, been there for hundreds of years or whatever, how long they've been there. Um, they know, the Bible says they know that a God exists. Not only a God, but the God of the Bible. They how does know the Bible know that? Because, and, and, and this has been proven over and over by missionaries, but um, they know that God exists, but they love their sin. They love eating their neighbors. They love stealing, all that stuff they, they love. And, um, and so that's why they won't come to God. But that's also why we send missionaries is to bring them a good news. Now let me flip it around for you. So if you, if you maybe to grab your argument, and say, well, and, uh, it, it, correct me if I'm if I'm misrepresenting your argument. Is it's not fair? I'm going to say it's not fair, John, that people don't know about God. They don't know about Jesus. And so why don't we send missionaries? Why don't why don't we do something about it? Okay, well they're going to reject Jesus, right? Some will, right? Many here have today. So we send missionaries to this island where people are innocent, right? Now we tell them about Jesus, right? And they reject him. We just did a bad thing because now those people are going to go to hell. Now, if you're using your argument, those people are going to go to hell because, you know, maybe some of them said, oh, I need Jesus. I want to be saved from hell. But others said, no, I don't want to because I love my nakedness and my fornication and, and murdering my neighbors and whatever. So some of them are going to reject them and end up in hell. So that's the mindset, right? So the best thing we could do is not send missionaries, but send a wall building team, build a high wall around that island so no one can penetrate it. Put up barbed wire and stuff and okay. isolate them. Now they're safe. Can I clarify yeah. one thing? Sure, yeah. So you're saying that like before 
somebody has explained to them and shown them that Christ exists, or Christ existed, or whatever, um, how, how would you prefer that to be referred to as? That he exists still, but he well, exists in another plane? Or no, no, exist? they know that God exists. So, so I guess... Okay, the, okay, the, so it's God. Not yeah, the exact... Well, Jesus is God. But specifically but in yeah. the instance of going... But yeah, I'm they sorry have, for this complexity. I'm very pedantic. Oh, that's okay. I, you know, I, so, I, I'm slow and I'm getting older, too. So, so those are my Oh, no, no, you're not. Not yet. <laughs> you got some time. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so we send somebody over there, right, and right. they die on the way there. They never get to the island. The boat has crumbled. Right, Are those right. people safe for the time being from burning in hell? Oh, the people on the island? Yes. No, no, only the ones that have trusted in God. Now, now, like going back yeah. to the, a good example is going back to the Old Testament. Uh, Jesus, Jesus was not in the Old Testament in the sense of the Messiah, but but he was preached about, but he never showed up until. <laughs> you know, 2000 AD, right? Yeah. He never came to Earth, so God is Jesus has always been. He's always existed from eternity, right? Right. But he didn't he incarnate, you know, through the Virgin Mary. He didn't uh, become a man in Jesus Christ uh, with a body until until um, 20 AD okay. um, or 2000. Yeah. Anyway, the year 2000. So um, I'm getting all mixed up. Zero AD. Anyway. Uh, timeline, but um, so in the Old Testament, they were looking forward to the coming Messiah, which they preached about a lot. Because you know, in the, uh, in the stories, if you've read, have you read the Bible much, it's been 15 years. Well, just uh, just to tell you that that uh, they they told them. I talked about the scriptures, the scriptures, the scriptures. No, wait, wait a minute, hold on. The the Bible hasn't been. Oh, thank you, yeah. no, thank you. Uh, the Bible has hadn't been written. Uh, the New Testament hadn't written until about like I think it's like 62 A.D. So a couple, like a, a generation after Jesus, right? It yeah. hadn't been compiled. And so, what are they talking about? Scripture. Because Jesus, well, when he was rocking, uh, walking on the road to Emmaus, there's two guys and they're going, oh, uh, you know, uh, they were just really distraught because Jesus had been crucified. And they hadn't heard that he'd risen. And Jesus is walking alongside them. And they're, they're going, well, what's what's going on? Why are you guys all, all like bummed out? And they go, well, you know, they told him about Jesus and how he had been crucified. And, and, now they're all, and he says, and he starts talking, he's explained from the scriptures who he was without saying who he was. And then it says their eyes were open and they went, oh, it's Jesus. Ah, and all of a sudden, wow, they were all excited. Like, wow, this is Jesus. He's risen from the dead. He's walking with them, actually. And they didn't so know Jesus beforehand? They, they didn't know They didn't know who that was. And yeah. the Bible says that, that they, he was hidden from them in a sense they didn't recognize him. But as soon as he explained it to them, uh, the veil was taken away. In other words, like they had blinders on. They go, yeah, I don't, I don't recognize you, Jesus. You know? And then all of a sudden, ah, oh, it's Jesus. Whoa, you did rise from the grave. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And, um, and so... It, just go back to the Old Testament. So they're looking forward to the Messiah, just like in a, in, a, in a similar way. I've never physically seen Jesus, so why do I believe in Jesus? Well, you look back to him. I, exactly, man. You're good. You're good. So they were looking forward. We're looking back. Yeah. So that's the idea. So somebody. So you're saying that because we look back, everybody that exists on Earth today has, at some point in time, seen the influence of Jesus and. Yeah, seen has the, the influence, blinders, right? Yeah. The because the Bible says, "Blessed are those um, uh, uh, who have have not seen yet believe." So they haven't physically seen Jesus. Okay. So the only, like you heard of the apostles, the yeah. leaders of the early church, they were the only ones that actually physically saw Jesus, right. and they had miraculous powers. Given to given to them by God, like they could they could touch people and heal them or cast out demons. So they you know like the apostle Peter, uh, just the shadow, walking by a shadow of somebody would be healed. You know things like that. But it ultimately, it was from God. So those those guys had actually witnessed. Uh, you know the apostle Paul they actually witnessed, seen so, physically seen Jesus. I have really interesting concept. So there's like different levels of having seen, seen Jesus too. And the different um, texts are like categories. I don't know if you could say that. Um, I don't know if you could say that because I can't. Say I've seen Jesus, right. but, uh, but, but the Bible says I, I'm, I'm blessed because I've been saved. So I recognize my sin almost 30 years ago. I recognized how sinful I was. And I go, wow, I am broken. Because I, because I heard a lot of messages like this, gospel messages, telling, talking about sin and hell and judgment. And I'm like, oh, I have not really heard eyes? about it. Yeah, because it says the gospel is the power of God to salvation for the Jew first and then the Gentile. So uh, God miraculously, and it's always miraculous when he saves somebody, but he opened my eyes and I went, oh, 
and I don't even remember, it's been 20, 29 and a half years ago. I don't remember what I actually said, yeah. but it was something like, yeah. save me, Jesus. Right. And I know I'm headed to hell. I don't want to go to hell. But at the same time, I felt this love, like, oh, wow, wow. Okay, so yeah. the hell that you were kind of uh, envisioning in your future, that you were looking forward to, now you get to look back at Jesus instead of looking forward to the to damnation Yeah, to destruction whatever, like, in destruction. hell, like, wow, it's scary. Yeah. Was you there, know? like, a physical manifestation of this destruction that you were not looking forward to, but you were kind of, like, afraid of prior oh, to? Oh, yeah, it? absolutely, was because in the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. So, and that's, that's God's holy wrath that will torment people forever yeah. and but, ever but was there like an, a physical thing no no were... no it's, it's all spiritual it wasn't even a vision or thing so it was just that hearing the message and so we learn we hear the message and god opens our eyes so it's a supernatural thing in that sense because because i can't just go hmm, let's see well it says i need to be saved from hell okay well i better get saved then it's not an intellectual thing so it's, it's it's a breakdown like oh it's something that god gives you yeah it's a it's a gift so the Bible says that not only but, faith is a gift, but repentance is a gift. But even in that in that instance, you're reliant on God to allow your eyes to be opened mm. to receive that message. Mm -hmm. And if God decides not to give you that opportunity, then yeah, then I'll be lost forever. So you, you're got it, and that's and that's what the Bible says. It says we must be saved by uh, by grace through faith. And so He gives us the faith to be saved. And so we don't know who's going to be saved. You know, everybody here might reject Jesus, might just say, oh, F you like they have been saying. And others may say, you know, I've been thinking about it. I don't want to.